we are continuing the celebration of Game Informer here at MinMax, uh, even on Bonus Pod, even on our Patreon exclusive podcast, which you can unlock if you're at the $5 tier on Patreon. So thanks everybody for unlocking this each and every week. It's a very fun show that Haley hosts every week. But this week, it's time for celebrating Game Informer, and we have the one and only Andrew Reiner joining us. Welcome, sir. Hello, Ben. It's good Hello. to be here. I was editor in chief, most or uh, executive editor with, I would say, two decades. Mm. <laughs> I had that role for a long time, and then uh, um, eventually became editor in chief, only for two years though. So it was it was a short lived stint. Yeah. Uh, in that chair, uh, obviously through turbulent times, right? Yeah. Um, how are you feeling? Uh, it's been bizarre. It's been just a little over a week since Game Informer was shut down by GameStop. So how did that, how did that news hit you? Uh, day one, I was, I'll kind of unpack it this way. Day sure. one, I was sad, obviously, right out of the gates. You know, it, it, it was kind of the sinking feeling in my gut that something I spent my entire adult life building was gone. Yeah. But then it was immediately followed by anger. And, and I think that was mostly because... I didn't get to hear from the staff, you know, yeah. they didn't get a, a farewell issue. And that I thought was the worst thing that could happen, right? Like, you know, give them a final issue, let them know, you know, like, Hey, this is your send off. Let's do this in a classy way that represents the legacy that, that, that this, this institution's had in the industry for three decades, yeah. right? Like everybody knew game informer and for them to, you know, to end it on this note, I thought was, you know, that's the thing that just really made me angry. And then the next few days, it was all sadness, you know, hearing from Matt Miller, you know, he called me right away. Yeah. But all the staffers, you know, just reaching out and then the industry uh, reaching out as well, letting me know how much, you know, my stint at Game Informer meant to him. Uh, for, I would say, a good week, you know, I was down in the dumps, just kind of lamenting uh, the past. Yeah, it, it's just, I mean, not giving them a final issue is brutal. And then shutting down the website and redirecting. I've had it happen accidentally so many times where I'm trying to click on some. I'm Googling around. It's like, oh, I want to check out this old interview we did. And I click on it. I just keep getting that stupid farewell message that was not written by anybody at Game Informer. And it makes me so yeah. mad. And just to have the website nuked, the Twitter account nuked, it's uh, it's it's brutal times. Um, but, uh, yeah, would you – Um, I know this is a weird question. Would it? Would you have preferred to be editor-in-chief as it went down? I mean, not that you could have saved it or anything that uh, Matt Miller couldn't have because he fought like hell, obviously, all the way. But, like, is there something kind of romantic about that idea? Were you, is that a feeling you had? It's like, I wish I was there for the end. Yeah, I mean, I think Andy would probably this say, say the same thing is, like, you wish you could say goodbye, right, right. To, to the community we had, to the legacy that, that we created and fostered and, you know, propped up for decades. It'd be nice to, you know, have that final chapter. Um you know, and, and you, you kind of feel that when you take a new job that you had unfinished business, right, as as we left. And yeah. I wonder if Andy feels the same way that I do. And I wonder, you know, you too, Hanson, like if you feel that, like, you know, you did how many podcasts over there? Like hundreds of podcasts, right? Like, yeah. and, and to turn that over to someone else, it's a weird feeling. Like mm -hmm. you, you really do kind of go through this withdrawal that uh, that's kind of hard to parse for months on end like you just feel like oh i got a i got a deadline i gotta hit but all of a sudden no i'm working on video games now that have you know release dates that are years out right. <laughs> it's a whole different world i think our, our circ got up to eight million at one point which right. is hard to think about you know there'd be days where i'd you know go to bed and wake up in a cold sweat at 3 a.m worrying about like my gex review uh, mm -hmm. You know, just like, oh, I, I hope I hope I didn't have any typos in there. I didn't get to look at it too much. I so hope I didn't drive accidentally to the office recommend at like 3 a.m. <laughs> oh, my God. Really? You'd actually go there yeah. and just check it out? Yeah. Yeah. That was before, you know, you're doing stuff online. You know, everything right. was it was on, you know, uh, printed on those papers that we'd proof. So you'd go read it and one more time and make sure you got it right. Yeah. <laughs> those were the days. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Blue Mayhem. Um, hey, good evening, uh, Hanson, and hey, good evening, uh, Reiner. Uh, Hello. I just want to, before we say anything, um, Hanson, thank you for doing this. Oh, yeah. I posted it in the MinMax Council, but uh, it's, this has hit me really hard. Yeah. Uh, the last issue just came, uh, the final issue came in the mail, and it was a little tough time for me to kind of look at it, and I haven't read it yet because it's been really a downer. Um, yeah. Reiner, I, I, I've been reading 
your writing as long as I've read any writing of the English language. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, at first it was writing. We could put that in air quotes, uh, right? Like sure. we, we kind of learned on the fly. Yeah. <laughs> no, absolutely. I, um, I've been getting Game Informer since it was Funko Land uh, before GameStop Whoa. even existed. I remember uh, as a small child uh, seeing your picture for the first time and it was a new face in the magazine and saying, oh my gosh, there's somebody new here. And just like voraciously <laughs> waiting for your new articles. I know this sounds weird. I, I even, when oh, you no. left, I, I sent you an email when you left. Like I was just so thankful because like I've developed my own writing, just reading your your writing in Game Informer. Um, I love hearing I, I, that, by the way. Like I, uh, that yeah. it inspired you to, to make your own stuff. I, I think that's fantastic. That's what it's all about, right? I, I hope so. Um, I, it really just your the writing style of the magazine is just so influential on me. I've collected hundreds of issues and they're all over my house, kind of just in different places, <laughs> squirreled away. But um, one of the things I wanted to ask you and, you know, feel, please feel free to answer to your comfort or whatever you feel is, is appropriate. But you said a few times, hey, you know, we tried to take this private, but mm. GameStop just wouldn't let us do it. And I, I've always kind of wondered in this rapidly changing media environment. I mean, Hanson's been wildly successful with Min Max going this kind of online always method. There's, there's no real written component to it. But, you know, I, I have children now. I want my children to read. I, I still stick a game informer in his hands when <laughs> I want him to still think about video games, but maybe not stare at a screen so much. And how. How did GameStop ultimately kind of end those talks of taking Game Informer private again? And what do you see the future of the media landscape as far as printed media for games? Because that that's now down by one and it's shrinking almost seemingly every year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the first question, I, I wonder how much I can really talk about this. I, I think Hanson knows some of the details. Um, you know, I was trying to spin Game Informer out at some point, um, you know, seeing the writing on the wall for, I would say, a decade before it actually went down. You know, like you just we, at that point, we were a dinosaur. Uh, we were still a very successful dinosaur. Uh, but, you know, the, the landscape of gaming had changed. Uh, and the landscape of game journalism had changed dramatically. Uh, and it, it just seemed like the writing was on the wall that print would go away and you were seeing our, our circulation go down. Yeah. Uh, that was, you know, partially from just the nature of things changing, but also from just some of the, the bad decisions I think we made along the way, both Game Informer as, as a organization and GameStop at the same time. Right. Uh, I don't know where you, you throw the blame, but I think, you know, if you look back on it as a whole, both of us are, are, are equally <laughs> to blame in, in, in uh, where, where things ended up. Um, and that was free falling for, it felt like five years, the six peak, years, yeah, maybe. Maybe Zenith of subs was what year do you think? Like 2011, 2012? Yeah, I mean, it stayed there for a while. Yeah. Like it was like we were just printing magazines like you, you wouldn't believe. And, you know, our biggest struggle back then, this is a whole different subject, was paper uh, cost mm -hmm. and, and paper quality and trying to keep it up, but also not, you know, killing our organization because paper costs too much. Right. And shipping and all that stuff. Um, you know, when you're printing eight million issues, that's a lot of trucks going out. <laughs> that's yeah. a lot of paper. Uh, but anyway, uh, you know, I was trying to actively spin it out. And if I told you the names of the people involved in my efforts, you, your brains would explode. Now, my like question, would, Renner, is why not say those names? Because uh, there might still be stuff going on. No way. Yeah. No way. Do you, do you yeah, have an At this point, it would be something? an IP sale. Okay. I'd be careful how much Game Informer content you use. <laughs> But uh, have you heard whispers uh, that there are these things happening? For uh, I've heard some scuttlebutt. I will say wow. that there's there might be some efforts underway to maybe. Why not? Why you know like if I had the money, I would I would probably try to pony up and and buy the IP and see what I could do with it. Yeah. Um, you know you could do 
you know, there's a variety of things you could do. You could spin it up as as a sleek modern uh, outlet. You could make it more of a, a insider magazine. You know, there's a bunch of those for for different um, different uh, sports. You know, smaller things and, and stuff like that that are have smaller circs but really high quality. Um, there's there's a lot of ways you could you could resurrect Game Informer, but um, I hope it happens. I, I, I tweeted, you know, I think it'll be a, I hope it's a Phoenix rising. I hope, I hope it does come back in some capacity. And I hope some of the people that have been involved in the, the magazine, if that happens, come along. But, uh, I mean, we're looking at like just yeah. news broke just a little while ago. I don't know if you saw this about how, you know, apparently Tango Gameworks is coming back with yep. the hi-fi yep. rush IP. So I, I, I am well, wary EGM. of this. EGM came EGM. back, what? A decade after it was gone? Yeah, but it was like right? four zombies working on the office. It wasn't like, it was the EGM, <laughs> no, no offense to the EGM folks, but it wasn't like, the, we're getting the crew back together. So I yeah. I know or nothing G4, about this. Right? Yeah, yeah, I know nothing about this. I'm trying to just not give people a glimmer of hope that like, Game Informer's going to live. Oh, yeah. Like, I, right? I'll always be hopeful though, like sure. that, that it could come back and, and that we could, you know, see a, another era, you know, like, what would it be at this point? Like, Star Trek comparison, not Next Generation, but Voyager, <laughs> Game Informer Voyager era. Yeah, uh, you know More something like, like that Dex, would be cool. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Special thanks to Airship Syndicate. If you jump in and support MinMax on Patreon at any tier, even the two dollar tier, before Friday, August sixteenth is over, we will DM you with a Steam code for Wayfinder. So if you like Darksiders and you want to check out that talent's new game Wayfinder and support independent games media at the same time, patreon.com slash minmax with two ends. Jump in before Friday the 16th. This was just a clip from our Patreon exclusive podcast called Bonus Pod. If you support MinMax on Patreon at the $5 tier, you unlock Bonus Pod each and every week. Haley McLean is joined by cohorts to talk about whatever they want. It's kind of the sister show, the companion show to the MinMax show podcast. So there's even more content in here. Also, we take calls from members of the community and we can really dive into the weeds on stuff. So if you want to more than double the amount of podcasts from MinMax every week, support MinMax on Patreon at the $5 tier. Thanks so much.